ஸ்ரீபாதராஜம் சரணம் பிரபத்யே சாப்டர் ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் எக்ஸ்பிளனேஷன் ஆஃப் த அர்தனாரீஸ்வர தத்வா ஆஃப்டர்வர்ட்ஸ் ஐ ஆர் ஸ்ரீ தர்மகுப்தா டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் த இன்னர் மீனிங் ஆஃப் த வேரியஸ் ஆர்னமெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் வெப்பன்ஸ் ஆஃப் சிவா தர்மகுப்தா நேரேட்டட் சங்கரா பட் A cord and a hook are the main weapons of Ganapati. A disc is the principal weapon of Vishnu. A trident is the important weapon of Shiva. The trident has three sharp prongs. They are in the form of flames of fire. All the three prongs are joined together at the bottom to become a single handle for the trident. Those three prongs indicate the gunas of sattva, rajas and tamas. In fact, their unity is beyond the three attributes. The trident indicates this inner meaning. Besides, breath flows through the ida and pingala nerves and reaches the point between the eyebrows in the head. the point where the three nerves ida pingala and sushumna meet is called the triveni sangam this is the center of brahmagnana this is the inner meaning of the trident shiva has an ornament called nagabharana when the kundalini power rises up one gets the eight siddhis shiva is called nagabharana to indicate the kundalini which is in the shape of a serpent shiva is also named as ishvara all the great siddhis are dangerous just like serpents since he keeps them under his control and utilizes them for the welfare of the world shiva also got the name of ishvara the dhamaru small drum is tied to the trident of shiva the sky has the quality of sound the vibrations of sound travel in the sky vibrations emerge when we chant or hear the mantra japa those vibrations cause sounds resembling the sounds from the dhamaru of lord shiva in our ears repeated recitation of mantra gives happiness to a yogi in that ineffable joy he dances to indicate this parameshwara shiva as the supreme being holds a dhamaru the ajna chakra located in the middle of the eyebrows is the center of all knowledge a wise man can acquire supernatural vision when this chakra unfolds in him a yogi will be able to understand the past present and future only through this chakra this ajna chakra is the third eye of parameshwara if this knowledge eye unfolds it will become possible to overcome cupid the deity of sensual desires it is said that shiva resides in a burial ground when all his desires are burned to ashes by the fire of yoga a yogi will experience a state of nirvana bringing forth profound peace knowledge or wisdom is compared with the white color that is vibhuti A person gets into pure wisdom when his thoughts and desires are extinguished. He gains happiness from it. The purification through wisdom takes place in four stages. They are the natural, supernatural, spiritual and mental planes. To indicate this, devotees of shiva wear four lines of holy ash on their forehead there is a supreme medicine called shilajit which looks like a jelly 
those who eat it will remain eternally young during ancient times a sage called shilada was living by eating stones he later took birth as nandishwara shri krishna was born in the rohini star in vrushaba rashi the star arudra is the place of rudra mithuna rashi signifies the phenomenon of ardhanarishwara vrushaba rashi appears prior to mithuna rashi in the sky that vrushaba is nandishwara nandi shows the form of dharma shiva burnt manmadha god of love and desire who belonged to the lower nature and who was a personification of lust then manmadha became formless and associated with the secret marital dharma of the higher nature that was the reason why krishna took to discipleship under sage upamanyu and worshiped shiva very sincerely and with the grace of shiva krishna had a son named pradyumna through rukmini this pradyumna was called manmadha of the lower nature in his previous birth vrushaba rashi is the house of both manmadha and kama sensual pleasures all righteous desires belong to the higher nature to make it known that it is accordance with the dharma to satisfy those righteous desires a ritual known as rushoda sarjana is performed the frightful tantric siddhis and powers are as dangerous as the tigers shiva kept those tantric siddhis and powers under his control the tiger is the vehicle for shakti as a sign that he kept shakti under control as his consort shiva wears the skin of a tiger the sacred river ganges who dwells in shiva's hair braids signifies pure brahmagnana the perennial flow of intelligence and the attainment of immortality the crescent moon on shiva's head signifies the great blissful joyous and profound tranquility resulting from the eternal graciousness therefore the nature of the chandra kaladhara wearer of the moon crown is the source for attainment of immortality and a state of ineffable happiness the inner meaning of the adhanarishvara tatva is that the light force which enables people to live is divided into two it remains as ovum in the uterus of a female and as sperm in a male and by the combination of those two a living creature is produced however in creation an earthworm contains both mother and father constituents within a single body in both men and women the natures of females and males coexist it must be noted that on the right side of the body masculine power dwells and on the left feminine power dwells it should be recognized that the power in the form of breath that circulates on the right side is the pingala nadi and the power that circulates on the left side is the ida nadi during pranayama when breath is inhaled from the right side heat is generated in the body therefore it is called surya nadi surya is sun when breath is inhaled from the left side the body cools down therefore it is called chandra nadi chandra is moon in the body of kala purusha the six months that give heat extending from mesha rashi to tula rashi in the zodiac are regarded as the surya nadi the other six months from 
ಆಶ್ವಯುಜ ಟು ಫಾಲ್ಗುಣ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಚಂದ್ರನಾಡಿ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಬೈ ದ ಮೋಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ದ ಫುಲ್ ಮೂನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಮೂನ್ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಬ್ರೀತಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಸ್ a yogi can achieve in his body all that exists in the wheel of time he can get the knowledge of time which enables him to be aware of the past present and future this wheel of time is to be recognized as ardhanarishwara tatva and as an inseparable couple night and day full moon and new moon and all such things appear in succession one after the other one is the basis for the other there can be no day without night and vice versa ardhanarishwara as the mother and the father is the cause for the emergence of this infinite creation the inner meaning of calling shiva a destroyer is that he is the basis for the old creation to exist and the new creation to come into existence changes in creation come about naturally the advent of a new creation its continuance for some time and again its annihilation are inescapable in order to attain all the astras shastras and mantras mentioned in the atharva veda one should have the grace of ishana rudra who is the lord of all the faculties of astras and shastras thus concluded shri dharma gupta i asked shri dharma gupta to explain in detail about the close connection between the star arudra and shiva parvati then he again started narrating rudra appears as a hunter holding a bow and chasing a running deer this figure is visible in the arudra star in the sky he looks like a hunter the effect of the movement of planets the image of rudra in the form of a hunter can be seen in the constellation that exists at a corner between the zodiac houses of gemini and cancer when malefic planets like saturn mars or rahu moon near this constellation wars that spread across the entire globe and massive devastations take place battles between devas and demons and the mahabharata war took place during such planetary movements kala samhara murti the dreadful rudra who holds a bow was described in the vedas as a form of manyu vedic god of war the weapon of that rudra is not the trident only the bow is his weapon in the month of magha the 14th moon phase that comes before the new moon is called mahashivaratri the 14th moon phase that comes before every month's new moon is named masa shivaratri worship of shiva during shani pradosha time results in the removal of the malefic influence of saturn when maha shivaratri occurs on a tuesday it is considered very important if the 13th moon phase occurs on a saturday then it is called shani trayodashi to remove different types of afflictions caused by saturn who brings forth the consequences of fate shiva should be worshiped and gingerly sesame seeds should be donated on shani trayodashi shiva is the lord of saturn so if shiva is worshiped with gingerly oil then the afflictions from saturn are removed if shiva is worshiped during dusk on saturdays all evils from karma will get annulled and peace and comfort will be up 
obtained because Shiva is the Lord of Saturn. Saturn causes us to experience the consequences of karma. Shiva causes destruction. Every person should worship Shiva during Shani Pradosha time. This worship reduces all heinous sins arising from inauspicious actions into ashes and purifies the body, mind, intellect, ego, heart and soul through fresh divine effulgent. Auspicious vibrations and bestows a happy new life. In order to obtain all these supreme achievements, one should worship Shiva during the Shani Pradosha time. By following the above procedure, the fury of Saturn will be abated. During the night hours of each Saturday, all the negative forces that preside over the sins of that living being which are the forces of misfortune and destruction that remain in an invisible thick black color form take residence in Mahakali, the form of Shakti of Mahakala, Shiva at the time of the great dissolution. The next day on Sunday at the time of sunrise on account of the grace of that Mahashakti dwelling at the central region of the cosmic sun a new life will commence for the spiritual aspirant. Heaps of inauspicious sins are burnt in the fire of yoga of Sri Parameshwara. Shiva in the form of the five elements. The five elements are Shiva's forms. The earthly nature is present in our body in the Mooladhara. As a sign of this, spiritual aspirants worship the Pardivalinga. Swadhisthana relates to the nature of water. Jalalingam represents this center. The Manipura relates to the nature of fire. The Jwala Lingam represents this center. This is also called Hiranyasthamba, pillar of gold. The Anahata in the heart is the seat for the airy nature. The Vayu Lingam is the symbol of this element of air. The Vishuddha in the throat is the seat of sky and is called Chidambara Lingam. This Chidambara Lingam, which is called Akasha Lingam, has no shape at all. The adoration, worship and darshan of these Shivalingams of the five elemental forces is highly fruitful. In the Chidambara Shetra town in Tamil Nadu, that which lies hidden behind a curtain is called a Chidambara Rahasya. Secret of Chidambara. Nothing is seen when the curtain is lifted. The pure sky is the Atmalingam of Shiva. The heart is the seat of spirit and therefore the soul dwells in the sky. In fact, the sky has no form at all. Yogis who concentrate their mind and meditate with a single pointed look upon their real self, will have the firmament of their heart opened up. The entire creation, the whole universe, stars, planets and all others will appear in their heart. Runa means sin. Aruna means sinless. Parameshwara resides in the sky of the heart. Parameshwara, Shiva, exist in Arunachala at Tiruvannamalai in the forms of Arunachaleshwara, the Arunachala mountain and in the form of a Mahasiddha. His darshan neutralizes all sins. The same Arunachaleshwara has now incarnated in the human form in Pitikapuram as Sri Padashri Vallabha. 
He is now brilliantly shining in divine glory in Kurungadda with the intention to liberate us. Kurungadda equals the Arunachala mountain. Arunachaleshwara in the form of Ardhanarishwara is none other than Shri Pada Shri Vallabha. The great Siddha in Arunachala is also in the guise of this sage only. Just as the mountain in Arunachala is the image of Shiva, also this Kurungadda is the form of Shri Vallabha. Just as the forces of Shiva are in the Arunachala Shivalingam, the forces of Shiva are in the form of Shri Pada Shri Vallabha. Seeing Parmeshwara in the form of Mahasiddha in Arunachala is very difficult. But this Mahasiddha form in the form of Shri Pada Shri Vallabha is easily accessible. Thus concluded Shri Dharma Gupta. I requested Shri Dharma Gupta, Sir, I heard that Shri Pada is the combined form of Shri Venkateshwara Swami along with Shri Padmavati Devi. But you affirmed that he is the form of Shiva Shakti. You are saying that it is highly meritorious to worship Shiva during Shani Pradosha time. All this is very confusing to me. Kindly explain. For that, Sri Dharma Gupta replied smilingly, Sir, the divine nature of Sri Pada Vallabha cannot be comprehended even by the seven rishis. Even then, I will try to explain this to you to the extent of my abilities. Lord Sri Venkateshwara has been in existence since Krita Yuga, Satya Yuga. He gave boons to Dasharatha, king of Ayodhya and father of Sri Rama. Since he said that he would be born as Sri Rama, he can also be worshipped as Sri Rama, the son of Kaushalya. Sri Venkateshwara Swami was worshipped for some time as Balatripura Sundari, a form of Shakti. After some time, he was worshipped in the form of Shiva for some days. Some people worshipped him as Subramanya Swami. After that, on the initiative of His Holiness, Sri Ramanuja, founder of the doctrine of Visista Advaita, he is now being worshipped by the Vaishnavites as Lord Mahavishnu. Buddhists regard him as the great Shunya. Why? He is really Lord Datta. He is highly tactful in conducting the drama of illusion. He demonstrates his leelas to those spiritual pursuers who call him regardless of how they call him by responding to their calls and saving them and thereby proving that he is God. He is the same one who is now giving his presence to the world as Shri Pada Shri Vallabha. On the left side of Shri Pada's body, Shakti moves around and on the right side, Shiva moves around. Therefore, he is the personification of Shiva Shakti. Mother Padmavati adorns his heart. The heart is the symbol of mercy. It is the place of the Anahata Chakra. Shakti extends from there to the higher chakras and also to the lower chakras. Therefore, in another body of divine consciousness, he is Sri Padmavati and Sri Venkateshwara. He is the form of Vani, Saraswati and Hiranyagarbha also. Vani that is Saraswati, who express herself as the para, Pashyanti, Madhyama and Vaikhari, forms of speech, the four stages of speech, dwells on his tongue. 
the divine consciousness of mother vani and hiranyagarbha remains in a non dualistic state the real chidambara secret is he assumes three different forms of consciousness at the same time there is not even a touch of similarity between his different bodies at the same time he assumes the bodies of consciousness of vani hiranyagarbha shiva parvati and padmavati shri venkateshwara simultaneously he took a body of consciousness called shri pada shri vallabha that transcended the above forms of consciousness this is his yoga maya his vaishnava maya this is his chidambara mystery he can be regarded as one belonging to dvaita advaita and vishisht dvaita sex and also as one who is beyond all those the reason for this is that there are no limits to his yoga maya and vaishnava maya for the tactful one who don the charming figure of jagan mohini the only female avatar of vishnu and distributed nectar only to deities for the one who enticed shiva in his mohini form and who made shiva enamored of him without the need for manmadha cupid and for one who gave birth to dharma shastra son of shiva and mohini nothing is impossible for him for lord datta who imparts the knowledge stating i am the mohini form i am also dharma shastra nothing is impossible for the him atma said that it will create itself through maya is it not he who was in the form of mohini created himself as dharma shastra oh what a tactful way saying this shri dharma gupta made me wonder shri pada rajam sharanam prapadhye